Now is a well-adjusted male in his 40s, shit-posting what's best described as knife essays to the YouTube. Well, you know, I like me a good switchblade. You know, like, like me a good switchblade. Like me a good switchblade. For example of my regular guyness. I'm great at hanging out with uh, the dog at parties. Oh yeah, I'm that guy. I pretend to care about hearing what someone else does for a job when they pretend to care by asking me about mine. Then afterward, I can make a awkward joke that just hangs heavy in the air between fading smiles like a stale fart. Just your normal dude who in his spare time films himself playing with pocket knives. That kind of guy. Anyway, since a guy like myself can't just have 10 switchblades, I bought me another, ProTech, the California-based switchblade company that makes their knives in California. I thought they were illegal out there. I got me the brand 3, or is it the brand 2? It's definitely not the brand 1. You, you know what? I'm going to look it up right now. Just uh, hold on one second. Yep, okay, it's the 3. It's the brand 3. The biggin. A biggin. How big, though? Um... Glad you asked because it's the dimensions part. It's a pretty big but light knife due in part to the aluminum handle and the distal tapering on the blade. Now the brand 3 features a big 3 and 3 quarters inch blade made from the 154 CM steel. A steel that doesn't impress the super steel crowd as it did maybe in the golden age of the cutlery lover. But could Protec interest you if they covered it in rose gold PVD? Mmm, you like? I don't know, it impressed me. The classy gold accents remind me fondly of the cross earrings dangling in front of mullets and towel racks from a Comfort Inn in 1992. Uh, those are both separate events. But the blade has an impressive tapering. I don't know if you can quite call it a false edge up top, but it has an incredibly thin spine and a pointy tip for your balloon popping missions. The lockup. It's your standard badass switch blade. That is single action out the side. Press a button, pop, and immediately your hollow eye sockets will light right up. It may sound counterintuitive to non-knife people or extremely tactical minds, but auto and assisted knives are only as fast as a good manual opener and are harder to close. Switch blades, when you get down to it, are fun fidget knives that make you feel real cool, like say a gang member from a musical, but they are less convenient, reliable, and a bit more fragile than a good manually opened knife. Tactical cosplayists hanging out in the YouTube comment sections may argue they haven't trained enough with them, and gloss over the fact that there are springs to break, buttons to gunk up. But the truth is, if you can't open and close the Spyderco paramilitary two faster than just about any switchblade, then you're a chump. Hard truths here. Having said all that, I love my switchblades, even when most of them have side-to-side -side blade play. It's common. While I don't fight with them or train in front of my couch on YouTube, it's hard to imagine spring-loaded knives with blade wobble are better in any situation than a good manual open knife. The brand is now well broken in and locks up a good portion of the time. When I first got it, put some nano oil on the button, kept working it. It felt like the blade hit too hard and the button hole had some anodization in it. So the button didn't pop back up as fast as the blade could deploy so it would bounce and not catch. So after pressing the button a lot and working the lube in it, it still had the problem and you know I finally said fuck it. But it does it only during certain times. Say when you need to deploy the blade opening and the handle is parallel to the ground and facing downward. That's when most of the lockup problems occur. You get a solid five out of seven locks. Then see if you orient it with the bolster area pointed down and a blade tip pointing to the ground. Five out of every five times. Blade and handle facing skyward in a parallel fashion, usually 100% of the time too, which my hesitation makes it sound like it's not 100% of the time, but I think it is. The handle is smooth, neutral, large, and comfortable. It's made from two slabs of screwed together 6061 T6 aluminum, which is about one of my favorite alloys. The anodization gives it a nice smooth feel, while giving it a touch of friction for your martial arts. The pocket clip is deep carry and murdered out, and when you think about it, it's really the only right answer, right? There's a good amount of tension to keep it in your pocket during your online sweat into the black ops class. The clip, while a little tight, shouldn't chew your pocket up because it's smooth underneath, and it has recessed hardware. The pocket clip is not positionable, and for righties, that means you can't move it. It's oriented at its most tactical. Tip down, blade backward, in your right pocket. Comparisons. I've had this for a year and a half now. And there's one guy that's really been asking me to review it, so I hope he can die happy now. I mean, he doesn't have to die, I just hope he's happy. Technically and emotionally speaking, it's a good knife. This particular colorway or trim will set you back about 220 when it's available. And it ain't available right now, looks like but uh, give it some time. It's a neutral grip, like I said before, which I really like. 
It fits my regular size crusty flaky hand. It would fit other crusty or lotioned up hands or even larger more tactical than my own. And it has a unique look so I'm real glad I own it. I'm also glad I own the Don here. Remember that one? This $280 knife is a good one too. You know, and most people seem to like Protex. I mean, not most people overall, but like Switchblade bros. Like you're not going to walk down the street and go, hey, do you like Protex? I mean, you could do that. I like the flare of the handle anodization and the micarta inlay. This one doesn't have a pocket clip. I think there is a version that has one, but those haven't been made in some time. But it allowed me to buy a cool clip slip for it. The fit and finish on the Protex and the unique colorways they come in make them appealing. My favorite autos are my Hawks, like the mud here. This one is kind of in limbo right now. Will they ever make them again? Who knows? Reminds me of an anchovy sometimes, but in a good way. Lock up and pivot on a Hawk is superior though. No blade play at all, 100% lock up, fully sealed mechanism on the mud. It's used to retail for about 390. If I had to get rid of my whole collection, I'd find a way to keep these Hawks. Turn tricks as a sandwich artist, you know? Sounds like a detail in an unsolved mystery. Imagining Robert Stack's voice right now. He did whatever it took. It's a terrible Robert Stack impression. Yep, my Hawks, like the deadlock here. As an out the front with a solid lockup, you know, hefty price tag at north of a thousand. The Protex are reasonably priced at 200 to 300 comparatively. The difference is as soon as you buy a Hawk from one of their drops, it immediately appreciates in value. Okay, I do like cheap knives too, like this Gonzo here. You know, it's long gone, you can't get them anymore, but costs about 20 bucks. Solidly made. I reviewed it many years ago and locks up every time. Huh. Wanna see a Kalishnikov? This one locks up 100% of the time too. It costs about $40 and is pretty lightweight. Kinda ugly though, but you know, I don't have a ton of room to talk. Wrapping it up. A person might complain a Protec costs too much because that's how things work. Someone's giving away free ice cream. Someone's complaining about the traffic. You know, I guess you have Kershaw autos made in the USA, or Kershaw autos made in the USA. They cost around a hundred bucks. You can find some Protex on the secondary or new that costs about a hundred to two hundred. Microtex make a lot of OTFs and, sorry, out the fronts, and some standard autos that start at 200, but the sky is the limit and they get pretty pricey pretty fast. Then uh, Guardian Tactical makes uh, autos in the USA here, although Protec doesn't make any double action out the fronts, just a single action Dark Angel. They make some of the cleanest designs out there. They have a lifetime warranty for workmanship, as long as there's no evidence of abuse. As an expert in knife abuse, and without ruining my beautiful switchblades from Protec, aluminum is a soft metal, and the steel stop pins that rest inside the aluminum can deform the softer aluminum around them when whacking things or batoning. You hit the blade, blade hit stop pin, stop pin deforms the aluminum. Anyway, if you like this video, subscribe. You'll find sometimes Protec seem to be out of stock everywhere. That's because Protec does batches on models, and I think they also move shops like last year, so trying to get back up to speed. So every so often when the knives sell out, they'll make a new batch. It's usually months or years between reruns. So when they are up for, you know, availability, buy them. It's kind of like the Great Eastern Cutlery. Anyway, buy a t-shirt for me to support me. Say hi to the patrons, some of whom are no longer with us. But let's honor the memory that they gave me some money once to continue making this bullshit. I mean, they're not dead. They just had their fill of the bro. Like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, where you can kind of get an idea of the knives I have, but I haven't reviewed yet. Then you can ask me repeatedly for months or years. So, thanks for watching.